I'm Kirk Hansen, Executive Director of the Markala Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. This is one of a series of short videos on the core ideas of ethics and business ethics. This video is about five ways to reason about ethics or to think ethically. Each of these, by the way, is backed up by a whole ethical and philosophical tradition, but I'm going to talk about them in very practical terms, about the kinds of questions and the kinds of reasoning we use when we argue about ethics and we think through how to act in a particular situation. One of the ways of thinking ethically has to do with analyzing whether the proposed behavior or standard of behavior promotes the greatest good or the greatest human welfare. And this is a net greatest good. In other words, it's a balance of the benefits and the harms which come from any particular action. And the ethically right thing would be that action which produces the greatest net benefit to human welfare. A second way of thinking ethically has to do with rights and human rights. And it says that you identify the legitimate rights and the human rights of individuals who are affected by a particular action. It may be uh, a question of, of their right to participate. It may be a question of their right to be treated in a particular way. It may be that they have contractual rights or legal rights that are of relevance uh, from an ethical standpoint. Similarly, this way of thinking asks a second question, which is, do I have a duty to treat this person in a certain way? It's the flip side of rights. If one person has a right and someone else or some other groups of individuals have a duty to treat them in a way that protects the rights that they have. A third way of thinking and arguing and reasoning about ethics has to do with fairness or justice. You analyze whether all parties will be treated fairly by the action that you propose to take. The ethical thing is that which treats people as fair as possible. This is uh, at times treating people equally, at other times it's treating them proportionately or uh, win differently by some kind of rational basis for treating them differently. For example, their compensation is developed and determined by their contribution to the organization. That would be a standard of fairness. A fourth way of thinking about ethics and reasoning about ethics has to do with what are called the virtues. The ancient Greeks and many philosophers since that time have argued that the good human being is one who practices certain values, certain virtues of fairness, of honesty, of integrity, and so on. And it is that set of virtues or list of virtues which constitutes what it is to be ethical. And so one argument might be this particular action I propose to in engage in is not virtuous or is virtuous, reflects the virtue of compassion or doesn't reflect the virtue of compassion. So that's a fourth way of thinking ethically. The fifth way of thinking ethically, which is getting increasing attention uh, in the last decade, is the concept of the common good. We've emphasized individual rights and, and such for so uh, many years and, and so much in American history that we're focused increasingly in the last few years on yes, but we have to balance that with a concern for the common good. How does this benefit all of humanity? How does this benefit everyone in a society if we engage in a particular action? These five ways of thinking are complementary to one another. They, they can all be used in assessing whether a particular action is ethical or whether uh, used to determine which of alternative actions are ethical. Just citing them though, we still have to deal with the problem of what is it one considers to be a good and a harm, a benefit and a harm. What does one consider to be the legitimate rights of others? What does one consider to be an appropriate standard for fairness? What really is in your definition of the canon of virtues? And finally, what do you consider to be the common good? We have to fill in the content of each of these ways of talking about ethics. There is a whole tradition and a lot of thinking that's gone into uh, a common understanding of each of these. It isn't a matter of whatever I think is rights is okay. There is a very strong and long-standing tradition of what fits in 
to each of these categories. The other problem is, of course, in approaching some individual cases, one particular approach may give a different answer than another. And so there is constantly the need to think about which of these ways of thinking applies best to this issue. If someone has a very strong human right to be treated in a particular way, that may loom much larger than any of the other kinds of arguments in a particular case, for example. Thank you, and for more information, please go to our website.